Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Anchor Star Wealth a Morning Show. We have three exciting topics for you today. And the first one's going to be, I'm going to talk about recession-proof stocks. I'm not calling for recession. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, but what if we do end up in a situation where either the rates being high for so long causes one, or the fact that uh, you know, we end up having one for whatever reason, what holds up in a recession as far as stocks. So I will talk about that. Then I'll transition to Mike and target earnings this morning. Mike's going to start off with that. Those are pretty good. We just put target into one of our models, which is pretty cool. Um, which, you know, when it goes up, you wish it was in every model, but we did at least put it into one, our income uh, model. So that's pretty cool. We'll talk about what's going on with Target. And lastly, we'll be talking about, you know, Mike's from the car space from way back, uh, right out of college. He's going to talk about 4 EV. So good stuff out there today. This is a financial education presentation. You have to do your own due diligence for acting upon anything you hear in this presentation. Full disclaimer information is available at angstarwealth.com and the opinions expressed are mine and Mike's alone. Let's go to a screen. I'm going to show you the Schwab Advisor Center which is this right here. This is a live shot. Uh, the market is open. Uh, this is our top 10 holdings. So uh, wall, let's see, stop view tabs. Yep. Are you seeing that Mike? Yes, I am I'm seeing top the top 10. 10. Okay. Yep. All right. So the question I want to talk today is, you know, what holds up in a recession? Again, not calling for one, just saying, where do you want to be positioned if there is one? Um, well, things we're doing, if you look at our number two holding, uh, we're, we're positioned right now not for a recession, but we've been positioning portfolios for an interest rate declining environment. So that's where this VCLT, that's a Vanguard bond fund, LT stands for long term. So moving out on that duration, you've heard us talk about before getting away from CDs and short term treasuries and trying to lock in these rates for longer before the rates drop, right? So making more money, the opposite of refining your house, right? We're on the other side of that, right? We want to lock in the most uh, we can. And if you do have CDs, those have been, call, been called left and right. Now that CDs are in the fours instead of up in the fives, um, you see a lot of those retired. But that's why that holding's moving up. Um, and you see uh, a lot of your portfolios of XLRE. It's not in our top 10 yet, but I think it will show up here pretty quick. Uh, I would say by the end of the month. Um, but, but real estate, right? That's where you want to be positioned into a rate cut environment. But a recession environment, here's what's difficult, okay? Is first of all, I would like VCLT and, and real estate into a mild recession, I guess I would say. In a huge recession or a COVID type scenario, everything's moving down. It, it was really everything, everything sells off. But specifically for stocks, um, it doesn't, so the, the question is is kind of no stocks are good. When you think, well, now, wait a second, wouldn't you, you, wouldn't you have like the, uh, you know, consumer products, right? Because if people still need toothpaste in a uh, recession or steep, people will still go to Walmart in a recession, uh, maybe not Target because they can't afford to pay 10 cents more per item uh, when they're hurting on money. Um, so when you think of, okay, if I position my portfolio into stocks that people, into companies, stocks of companies that people need, then wouldn't my portfolio be recession proof? And this is where, if you've ever heard of the different analogies of the theory and reality, in theory, you are 100% correct. But you live in the real world and so does your portfolio. And here's the problem with any stock in a recession is ETFs, mutual funds, all the other investments that hold baskets of equities that people are selling out of wholesale, say just the SPY. So you have you know, several companies in the SPY would hold up just fine during recession if they were on their own, but the index sells off because the overall market sells off. And you think in the power of trillions of dollars in these ETFs as a, in, as a whole, uh, as an asset class that starts selling off, forcing selling in the stocks that are within those ETFs and mutual funds, regardless of their exposure to the uh, to the actual recession. And you're like, okay, Steve, Mike, why don't I just hold the individual stock? And then I would say, you're not listening. If you do hold the individual stocks of those companies and you're like, I have, I don't care what the ETF does. Yes, you do. Because when the ETF sells off, your stock is going down because it's forced selling of that individual stock, even though you hold the individual stock. Now, it also provides an opportunity when you look at 
um, you know, I'll just talk Apple instead of, but there are some obviously best of breed uh, stocks on, on this list. But when you look at Apple specifically, at, when the market sells off, even if the iPhone 16 crushes, you know, all of the numbers out there, Apple will go down. The individual performance of Apple cannot outweigh the forced selling of the entire market. So therefore, you, you'll hear the term Apple's being unfairly punished. Well, and you're, if you're an Apple holder, you go, well, that's not good news. And it's like, well, yes, it is, because that won't last forever. So if you need to buy more Apple, that's the time to buy more Apple when they get unfairly punished, right? Because the snapback, when you've heard me talk about that for our individual client meetings, the snapback in big tech is huge. So it's like, if the market sells off, well, it's a time to buy those uh, best of breed stocks. But if you're trying to stay safe in, you know, Procter and Gamble and Kraft Heinz and stuff that everybody uses on a daily basis, like I said, you get an A for your academic paper because in theory, that's a good idea. But in reality, they get punished alongside everything else. So anyhow, just wanted to answer that because I do get that question uh, quite regularly. Um, I'm not predicting a recession. We shall see. Uh, there's lots of things out there. You know, the market's been higher, what, nine in the last 10 days. Um, okay. So kind of crazy how the market's kind of just blowing off a, a lot of indicators that that aren't great uh, out there um but we're positioning right now for the rate cuts we'll worry about a recession if that starts to come up on the to the radar scope so that's all i have for you today i'm going to turn you over to mike now and let's hear more about target and those earnings all right well last week we heard about walmart lifting uh doing well uh as far as this year and then predicting a little bit of softness next year Target pretty much did the same thing, beat on revenue, beat on earnings, and has a cautious sales outlook. But Target jumped even further than Walmart. Walmart was up 6 or 7%. Target is up 14%. And, you know, the, the bottom line numbers were right here. Earnings were expected $2.18. It hit 257 so that's a solid beat. And then revenue is, a you know, 20 5.45 billion versus 25.21 billion. So great beat there. So Target, fantastic. So, and Steve mentioned we're putting Target in some of the models. I want to show you. So you're like, so why aren't I in Target? If it went up 14% and Walmart only went up 6%, you know, well, how's Target doing? So I'm going to show you the Target stock. And this is a one year graph of Target stock. And you can kind of see that they had a nice surge back in November of last year, went all the way up, kind of peaked right in April, and then sold off, you know, uh, 40 points, almost 25%. But more importantly, how did they do against Walmart? Because that's, that's what I immediately thought, and that's why it shows right up in here, is let's see what they did against Walmart. Walmart is the blue line. And you can see that Walmart did not uh, have – the same surge back in November. In fact, they went down and it looked for a while like, oh, they're tracking right along the same, but Walmart has significantly done better than Target, 43% over a year versus 24%. So that's that's pretty, that's pretty big. Um, another thing with Target I wanted to show is, um, you know, they, they said next year it's gonna be cautious. And this is where, you know, Steve talked about the recession. We're certainly not forecasting one. I saw one odds where I, I think someone lowered it to 20% chance of a recession from 25. So, you know, there's a, there is a chance, certainly there is, but it's from both Walmart and Target, it seems like they're saying, if there's gonna be one, it's gonna be next year. We're, we're, you know, and I don't know how much I always trust Walmart and Target to tell me what's gonna happen in the financial markets next year. Obviously they have to, they pin a lot of research because they have to build the product for it. But, you know, they're, they're obviously setting up their, their, their shareholders to understand that. I thought, you know, one of the questions I ask myself when I hear Target and Walmart is, okay, what percentage of the retail market do they have in the online market? And I just thought I would share this, this chart because Amazon is one of our top 10 holdings. Apple's one of our top 10 holdings. And you can see Walmart is actually number two behind Amazon. This is online retail. So uh, makes sense. You know, you can see targets down at number five. And then some of the other ones might surprise you having a Carvana or a Kroger yeah. in the top 10. So, you know, this kind of shows you how Amazon is dominating the retail uh, e-commerce where, you know, it still seems like Walmart 
know, if everything shut down on the internet, I think Walmart finds a way to stay open. Obviously, it still <laughs> affects them. Uh, you know, if Walmart ever shuts down, I don't know. We're all going to starve and run out of toilet paper, and you know, I don't even know. You know, so. Uh, you know, I just thought that was an interesting comparison for, for what our investments are in. So let me go to what our investments are not in, but it's interesting. <laughs> so, and you'll be thankful they're not in. And it's not in <laughs> Ford. So it's not, Ford is not in our book. And Ford, you know, it just announced they're delaying an EV plant. Guess what? EV sales are down. Um, the, the tricky thing with automotive is, you know, it takes years to get these plants off the ground, build the supply chain and prepare. And it's hard to predict, you know, four years ago, everyone's like EVs, the way it's going to go, everything's going to be EV, you know, California's going to get rid of combustion engines. You know, of course, we're going to build EV plants. And now combined with lower gas prices, not as low as it's ever been, but lower gas prices, uh, guess what? EV sales are not doing as well. Throw in that we're getting uh, external country competitors putting in cheap EVs, China, you know, and it's not quite as profitable when, when you consider buying a Ford, a big F-250 or, you know, decked out Mustang compared to a, you know, a cheap EV, uh, if you can find those, um, and you have to build up the battery production, all that. So Ford says, yeah, we're going to hedge our bets, which is smart. They're going to they're going to like keep our toes in this, but we're not going full EV. Now, what has this done to their stock price, at least today? I mean, this is just today. It's up two percent, not a major move. And this this graph I'm showing you here is one month. But let me let me let me back it up and show you a, a one year graph. Ugh, glad glad Ford's not in our models. Uh, basically, it's break even since November, which is probably, although you had a nice run for a while. But if we go back to let's really look, because Ford's been around for a long, long time. You can see in 2008 when General Motors and Chrysler, uh, they, they they end up taking the government money and going bankrupt. Ford almost went out. They they didn't quite. So their stock, you know, was trading down to like a dollar or something like that. Um, but you can see that their stock actually peaked over 30 in 1997. So it's always that logic of, man, in 1997, if I would have took $30,000 and bought the stock instead of buying the car, eh, maybe you should have just bought the car because the stocks went <laughs> down. Now, it does pay a dividend, so I don't want to discount that. Um, one thing on automotive companies, and I don't know if it was Warren Buffett that said it, it was someone way smarter than me, but they said, especially a company like Ford, General Motors, these are essentially... Um, they, they make cars, but really they're an annuity and a healthcare insurance company paying, you know, their workers. So, so that's what they are. Um, invest accordingly. Uh, they, they have not done very well. Uh, you know, do I want Ford to stay in business? Absolutely. Uh, competition is very important. And, um, you know, and Ford puts out a good product. And disclaimer, my wife works for Ford. So, uh, yes, I better say they put out a good product. So I've got one in my garage. So um, with that, you know, there's some information on Ford and Target. So back to you, Steve. All right. Sounds good. You know, I, I think of uh, EVs and I was listening to some, I don't know what it was, but Bugatti, if you're familiar with the car maker, Bugatti, you know, super high end, uh, probably the highest end, at least as far as I know, uh, has a hybrid uh, they released this year. Uh, I think it's either 12 or 16 cylinders uh, and then plus EV. And the price tag on it is four and a half million. Wow. Um, and and they sold out almost instantly, right? Of their, uh, you know, the, they took orders, right? And then uh, those sold out instantly. And now there's a waiting list. So so maybe EVs aren't aren't completely dead. <laughs> but yeah, it's the perfect mixture of. And so get this. So it's it's. So I was like, what? So I had to look at a little more. So and it's hot. It's top end speed, or it's a zero to sixty speed is one point nine seconds. I'm like. Dude, that already exists across several EVs. It's like you would think Bugatti, they, the engineers must have tried everything possible to beat it, right? Because they don't want to come out as the same as a Tesla. And yep, it is the same as a Tesla. But anyway, I thought that was interesting. But so, what kind, what kind of right, gas mileage of good, they get? What kind of gas mileage they get? You know, they mentioned <laughs> that too. It's like, yeah, it's probably in the single digits, uh, even with the hybrid aspect of it. So anyhow. So, all right. Hey, good, uh, good topics this morning. Uh, so far, markets in the green. Hope that holds and we will catch you guys back tomorrow. Have a good one.